Hello, and welcome to episode 5 of Reference Wednesdays. Hope everyone had a lovely Independence Day and or Canada Day, if you're in Canada. I am. <laughs> okay, so in my last video, I talked about potentially doing some master studies of Frank Frazetta's artwork, and I actually ended up doing that a few times since last week. And so in this video, I will tell you about how I approached it, show you the footage of the master studies, as well as some subsequent photo studies. And I will go over some highlights of what I consciously learned in the process and if I think it was beneficial to me. So in case you don't know who Frank Frazetta is, he is one of the most famous and influential fantasy artists slash painters, and you can clearly see his influence echo through many current famous artists. Uh, I personally actually noticed that a lot while looking at his work so closely over the past week, so that's pretty cool to see. Always really, really cool to see. Um, yeah, so I got a bunch of his art to study from frankfrazetta.org org which looks outdated kind of as a website but it has a ton of images and they're really nicely organized in different galleries so i would um highly recommend checking that out instead of just google searching because the images on this website are actually pretty good quality so it's nice to look at those anyway so yeah, in this video, I'm using some photo references by Studio Graffiti as usual, specifically from a pack called Female Warrior. And if you thought that the lady in my last Reference Wednesday episode was ripped, well, hang on to your hats because the woman in this one is just so incredibly built and apparently has like zero body fat from the looks of her abs and arms. So it was kind of difficult to draw, but man, excellent excellent resource and she looks totally powerful definitely female warrior <laughs> material so yeah if you want to get your hands on this photo pack or any other by studio graffiti i have a 20 percent discount code in my description and a link to where you can get those packs so yes without further delays i'm going to be splitting this video into a a few parts four parts in total and i'll just show you a bunch of the different footage and talk about like how i approached it and what some of the results are so part one is the first pass at the master studies and how i approached these and what i got out of them so i gotta be honest i have never actually done such a focused approach to studying another artist's work before and so I didn't really know what to expect. I mentioned in the last episode that I recommend doing a study sandwich, starting with some photo studies to see where you currently are at and assessing what you want to improve upon, then doing a bunch of master studies of the target artist, followed by some more photo studies applying the newly learned techniques, stylistic or otherwise. So I did exactly this. I have about six and a half hours worth of footage or so in total and unfortunately i did forget to press record a couple of times so it's probably more like seven or seven and a half hours in total um and yeah i did about three study sessions over the past week and i guess they were like a couple of hours or like two and a half hours each so firstly i'm going to talk about what it is that i wanted to get out of studying frank frazetta's work and why I chose him in the first place. So I do adore his expressive and muscular figures, and I think they're depicted with such perfection and form and beauty that it's definitely worth studying. I mean, not to mention that he's hugely influential already, so it's kind of a no-brainer. And I also wanted to pay attention to his shape design, proportions, and specifically the way he depicts muscles, because that's a huge weak point for me personally. I gathered a bunch of his work into a reference board. In case you don't know, I use a little app called PureRef. Uh, it's free and you can look it up. I, I would highly recommend. It's very, very useful. That's what I use in all of these videos. And as you can see, I can make it so that it floats above the Photoshop in window. Anyway, so I decided to do some studies of his pen and pencil artwork because it seemed more applicable to what I was trying to accomplish for now and also seemed less intimidating to me than studying his paintings. I don't really know much about painting, so yeah, I'm just whatever. I'm gonna maybe come back to that later because I did actually end up doing one painting study, but anyway, so after picking what to study, I essentially just began trying to duplicate his work. 
<laughs> this is a pretty alien activity to me uh, since it requires copying something one to one exactly and is so completely different from doing photo studies um yeah doing photo studies still requires a lot of deciphering and modification even it, even though it might appear to be minimal it's still a lot of um simplification and changing things obviously because photos are you know completely realistic uh, especially if you involve stylization whereas this activity aka master studies well what can i say it requires absolutely intense attention to detail and it's it's pretty difficult and this is coming from me a person who already is a bit obsessed with details as is but moving on yeah, so doing these few studies really made me notice a lot about Frazetta's style as a whole. Although his art is relatively realistic when it comes to proportions, I'm obviously talking about idealized forms, but otherwise it is technically still realism. And here are some notes that I came away with. So number one is that there's a lot of contrast and economy when it comes to shadow areas. A lot of shadow grouping. And the results are really quite striking because the realism remains pretty intact, but there's still a very graphic feel to the art because of how stark the contrast is between the lights and the darks. I know this is a pretty standard comic book type of approach, but to be honest, I seldom see comics that come anywhere near this level of contrast mastery. So yeah, definitely a lot to learn here from this and number two is that there is very nice use of different textures all over the place so i love the way that he uh, approaches hair specifically uh and the fabric as well and there's there's honestly a lot to observe and i, I mostly only focused only 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 really focused on studying the figures but i did notice that the way that he draws trees and foliage is also incredible so th there's a lot that i can study from that as well maybe hopefully in the future yeah and lastly number three is the hatching direction so this is the one that really stood out to me as something that i can seriously learn from and on that note i'm going to move on to part two which is the, my first photo study after doing some master studies and whether i learned anything from it so yeah, this is a good place to show you guys my first photo study after doing four master studies. I pulled up a photo from a graffiti pack and tried to approach the study by utilizing the technique that I took away from doing the master studies. I purposefully did not look at any of Frazetta's art while I was doing this photo study because I needed to activate my brain and try to remember what I learned uh, with muscle memory and just you know by thinking about it instead of relying on referencing his art i don't know if you guys know this about me but i actually do not like using references especially multiple references when working on art so when doing actual work i mean i generally avoid them unless it's absolutely necessary or i have to draw something super specific so this is pretty much the same type of mindset coming into play here um, I like to squeeze as much out of a study session as I possibly can and then afterwards rely on memory when it comes to making actual artwork. And by actual artwork, I mean artwork that is not warm-ups or studies and is either for commercial purposes or if I'm doing something personal. So, yeah. Anyway, let us discuss the results of the first photo study, thus a completion of the first study sandwich, as I apparently like to call it, so... Yeah, I was not too happy with it, but it was okay. So what I noticed right away is that I obviously failed to be economic with the shadows and did not group them properly to create stark contrast. This is technically alright because, as you can see, the reference photo wasn't very contrasty to begin with and the leg area especially was a bit murky in the photo so it was kind of hard to see what's going on there. But I still found the result of the study kind of underwhelming overall. And so I decided that the worst thing about it uh, is probably the fact that the hatching is just all over the place in terms of direction. It suddenly stood out to me how just how organized Frazetta's hatching is and how pleasing to the eye the result of that can be. 
So I decided to do a couple more master studies to focus to focus on that specifically and I also squeezed in one painting study as well just because I don't know I was curious and I wanted to give that a try as well and by the way I totally forgot to draw a bikini top on this lady thought I'd mention that because it looks ridiculous without it but oh well um maybe I'll draw it in later I don't know so yeah this takes us to part three which is rest and study sandwich number two I wanted to quickly talk about how important it is to take a rest from doing intense studying like this. Maybe this isn't that intense for most other people, but to me it kind of is, especially because I have to do a ton of other art related work in between, so it's not like these study sessions uh, are the only thing that I focused on throughout this week, um, which can it can seem that way, but it, it, it isn't. I did a lot of other stuff as well. Um, yeah, it can often really help if uh, it can often really help you digest uh, what you learned and come back fresh. I think it's more efficient in the long run to use your energy in bursts while maintaining a healthy level of rest and like doing other types of activities as well, rather than just draining all your energy into one thing, art specifically in this case, or improving or something like that, um, over the course of like weeks until you're completely burnt out and feel like death. I must say I have definitely been there and I never want to go there again, so yeah. Uh, just a quick point of advice, uh, drink plenty of water and get a healthy amount of sleep, you guys, and make sure you eat and take breaks because I know that if you get obsessive about stuff like this, like I've known many people who just completely fail to take care of their, uh, you know, earthly vessel. And so you should definitely never forget to do that <laughs> and take a weekend off if you can. But anyway, so yeah, I did take a long weekend off and when I got back home, I decided to do another study sandwich. So I started with a couple of photos one more time. Let me just say that this model is absolutely incredible and the photos I used here are from the female warrior pack I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, link in the description for that. So I did a few studies as a warm-up and to assess the current state of things once more. I decided to, um, sorry, I gotta say that since I started doing these warm-up sessions and figure studies, I think I have gotten a lot better at eyeballing proportions. And this is exactly one of the reasons why I think tracing is a bit pointless and perhaps a waste of time in my opinion, mainly because being able to eyeball proportions takes time and it is very difficult at first but the only thing that'll help you get better at it is the sheer volume of um your studies so yeah uh, the more you do it the more accurate it will get and at the risk of sounding a little bit cocky i do think that my ability to duplicate uh frank frazetta's work and the master studies is not bad and i think i owe that to a ton of practice in eyeballing proportions so obsessively so yeah just thought i'd mention that <laughs> yeah so thanks to this model i think i seriously leveled up in my understanding of arm muscles i struggled a lot with them in the past just because there are like so many muscles clustered in such a small area of the body you know what i mean but these slow and meticulous studies actually helped a lot and so after i started to get bored of doing them after about an hour or so i moved on to doing some more master studies and this time i decided to attempt a quick figure study from one of frazetta's paintings most of what you will see is me struggling with digital painting <laughs> as usual. Uh, I also like to eyeball colors and try to just find them in the color wheel or the color uh, circle, sorry, square, whatever you might want to call it in Photoshop. Um, yeah, without actual color picking because I feel like this personally helps me. But as you can see, I'm not the best at it, so a lot of the colors are a bit off, which is totally fine. I, I think I just personally really like the challenge, and I think it helps me understand 
where certain colors are located in the color wheel type of situation. So yeah, I think I want to try to do some master studies of Frank Frazetta later actually in gouache or some sort some other sort of traditional medium because I found that the digital painting is just kind of tedious but also it's there's something there's just something off about it it's like it just looks too digital to me I don't know even though I tried to do the canvas texture and I tried to use like traditional looking brushes I think I still will benefit more from doing some of these studies in actual paint on paper so yeah something for the future I will probably attempt to do at some point I did a quick photo study after this, but unfortunately I forgot to hit record until I had to take a bathroom break. So I just have the last snippet of it. And as I've mentioned before, my biggest area of focus secondarily to studying the muscles became the hatching direction. I think I did get better at it after I was able to um, consciously like pay attention to it while I was making these studies or this study. and yeah with making sure that there is just one main observable hatching direction in this particular case it was vertical and i am much happier with these results and so we're at part four which is the final study session so i woke up this morning wanting to do one more before putting together the video i noticed i became kind of obsessive over this stuff uh, I have a ton of other stuff to do today, unfortunately, and I don't even know if I'll be able to finish editing this video in time, but yeah, I figured I can spare an hour or so in the morning. So I started with two warm-up studies and then did two photo studies afterwards uh, in the same way that I did previously. So yeah, again, uh, forgetting to record one of them, unfortunately, <laughs> I think I just, I don't know, I'm starting to lose focus on this because I hit record and stop like way too many times uh yeah anyways i gotta conclude this video pretty soon so i'm just gonna show you an extremely sped up version while talking about one thing that kind of stood out to me that i think is important so and that thing is the fact that progression is not linear i noticed while doing the studies this morning that they just seem worse than before and that's okay I was very tired and woke up earlier than usual. I typically don't even draw so soon after waking up and honestly, sometimes they're just bad days. I think it's very important to keep in mind that you won't necessarily be on a straight upwards trajectory the entire time while you study art. And that is perfectly fine. And to just, it's perfectly fine to have a day where things seem more difficult or slower than usual. That's about it. I mean, I know this isn't exactly like earth shattering revelations over here, but I just thought that's something that's kind of important to reiterate once in a while, because I think um, it can feel quite disappointing to feel like you're regressing. But, you know, it's just a natural way of how things work. And just because you have a worse day that one time does not mean you you have suddenly regressed in skill all over. So yeah, that's that's essentially the gist of my point. And so lastly, I'm going to show you guys my four photo studies on one canvas so that you can see the progression for yourself. Personally, I'm very happy with the one I forgot to record, hilariously enough. God, I still can't believe that. It's so annoying. <laughs> 
It would have been nice to see a playback of that one, but oh well. I think that was a major level up for me in terms of hatching direction and just the overall delicate depictions of the muscles. I feel relatively comfortable with armpits now, with not to some extent anyway. Seriously, this used to be the biggest question mark for me, like armpit muscles. Like what is even going on down there, you know what I mean? <laughs> so many overlaps, that's for sure, but yeah, I definitely think I have a pretty decent grip on what's going on there now. Um, I still like the second study very much as well. Uh, as for the last one, I think the reference was a bit more difficult this time around, and there was definitely some major warping from the lens or something like that, so I took more liberties with the body shapes than usual. But I'm overall relatively happy with the result. I think I was able to sustain a decent level of hatching direction, though it's not quite as effective as the previous study. I think still overall it's a, it's a really nice exercise to try to approach something differently. Here's a side-by-side -side slide of how differently I have been approaching figure drawings in these sessions um, from like the last few sessions. So you can see it to, in direct comparison. It's pretty fun to see them side by side, I thought. Um, you can also probably tell that there is definitely some improvement. At least I hope you can tell anyway. I know that generally if there's some sort of uh, rendering involved or more details, people can often just assume that it's automatically better, but not always. It's just a difference in approach is all, but yeah. Overall, pretty interesting experiment. I'm glad I decided to record a bunch of this stuff and I'm kind of mulling over whether anybody would be interested in obtaining the real-time footage. Um, there is about seven hours of it so I would be happy to throw it into a pack and put it up on my Gumroad store um, to make some, you know, pocket change. So yeah, if anyone's interested in that, uh, just let me know and I'll, I'll throw it together and put it up on my Gumroad. But yeah! That's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching the results of this experiment. And I do think that the level of intensity is a bit too high for me um, to keep this as a regular practice, but I have a ton of other things I'm going to try in the future with the, this reference Wednesday show, some of which I'll, I'll talk, talk to you guys about later. Maybe I'll do a little poll or something. But yes, I am thinking of making videos here and there showing you guys how I approach analyzing someone else's art style as well. So let me know if that's something you'd be interested in and maybe even drop a comment of what artist style you'd like to see me analyze if that's something you'd like to see. Yeah, so thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel <laughs> or watching this video and uh, hopefully you subscribed if you like my content and I will see you guys in the next episode of Reference Wednesdays. Bye!